Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for this opportunity to bring His truth to you. Are you ready to call in your daily bread now? Praise God. Join me and say these words with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today. It's coming to me freely. Thank you, Jesus. And I receive all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. A miracle is taking place right now in your life. Hallelujah. And as those miracles come, I want to hear from you. I want to hear your testimony. God bless you. Father, we give you praise today because your word is coming to our spirit strong. Thank you for your spirit at work in us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, in hope of eternal life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's something about this statement. I remember yesterday reading it and it took me into another dimension. Lord, help us today. In hope of eternal life. This is the hope he has called us for. This is the hope we must have. What hope? Hope of eternal life. Which God who cannot lie promised before the world began. God promised eternal life. When? Before the world began. If he promised it before the world began. Paul says now that we are in hope of that eternal life. What does that tell you? We haven't received it in the fullness now. But guess what he says? Guess what he says in verse 3. Now he promised it in the, in the, before the world began. But had in due time manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. In due time, the manifestation that of that promise, that promise of eternal life. Now, when was that due time? In Christ Jesus, when Jesus came on the scene. I explained that to you before. The purpose of Jesus' coming was to come and give us life. What life? Eternal life. So when we believe in Jesus, he says, we have eternal life. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now Paul says, this hope of eternal life. He was writing to Titus. He says, look, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the hope of eternal life, I was called in. Eternal life that God promised before the world began. I was called in to begin to preach the gospel because God had manifested that eternal life already. He has done his part already. Now, guess what? If God had done his part, the question, are we living in the fullness of eternal life? No, we are not yet. No, we are not. And that's why God is sending me to you right now. Praise God. We, we, we are in, he has done his part. He has released Jesus to us. And Jesus has come. And Jesus is the minister of eternal life. Yeah, he is the minister of eternal life. So we saw that in, in John chapter 17. He says, God has given him authority over all flesh that he jesus will give eternal life to as many as god has given to him now you that believe in jesus christ you have been given to jesus christ and by his death and by the releasing and by the releasing of the holy spirit this eternal life has been given to us and it is working in us right now but hey brothers and sisters are we manifesting that eternal life already 
We ought to be manifesting that eternal life. Now, how do we manifest that eternal life? It is born by the Spirit of God that is in us. But first of all, you, God, have done His part because this is His purpose. You have to have that hope that eternal life will envelop your whole being. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Jesus, who is the captain, Halakaya <laughs> Baya. Jesus who's the captain of our salvation. Now, what does it mean salvation? What does it mean captain of our salvation? He, <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. He, the captain, meaning everyone that believes in him should look like him. That's what it means, captain. Not captain as in, you know, like a football captain. I say, oh, I'm the one that, you know, tells Oh, I, I, everybody listen to me. Everybody listen to me. No, no. This captain says, everyone, look to me. What you see in me is who you are. Praise God. What you see in our captain, what we see in our captain is who we are. Now think about it. Everything we see in our captain. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. What does that mean? He is the beginning and the end of our faith. Now, one big question I ask you, if Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, how come we don't get to the place where we allow him to finish our faith? We allow him to begin our faith, but we don't allow him to finish our faith. You say, what do you mean by that? Yeah, even our life. Jesus is alive till this day. I always say this. Jesus is so alive that he can walk into this earth, not by any supernatural means. I mean, he just lives where he is right now. I say, Lord, I want to go to earth to see some people. He can walk, and he's not coming from the dead. He's not coming from the realm of the spirit. He is alive. He will just be transported through the spirit. Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? But he will come here physically. This is Jesus. The same Jesus Peter saw. The same Jesus that walked on this earth. This is me. He is that alive. And guess what? He wants us to be that alive. You see, he, because we don't know him. And that's the problem. We don't know him. And sometimes we get to start knowing him and stop somewhere along the line because we are so full of the little that we know. Brothers and sisters, there is more. There is more. He said he has manifested this eternal life. How? Through preaching. Through preaching. The question then is, what are we preaching? What are we preaching? I'll show you. Let's go back to John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. John chapter 17. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 17. He says, verse, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 2. He says, as thou, John 17 from verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And then verse 3 says, and this is life eternal. This is it. What is it? That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the knowledge of God. That is eternal life. What is eternal life? Now, this is the reason Paul says he, he has manifested his word through preaching. What do we preach? We ought to preach the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's the preaching he has sent us to preach, praise God. The knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. Now, the more we know him, now how do we know him? We don't know him by reading about him. No, 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 sir. This book only talks about him. This book will never make you know him. I'm telling you the truth. If you've read the Bible cover to cover and then you have had an encounter with the Lord, you will understand what I'm saying. This book is wonderful. It's good. It talks about him. But hear me, when you finish reading the book, close the book and go on your knees and begin to ask, Lord, who are you? <laughs> what a question. Praise God. What a question to ask. Say, Lord, who are you? Moses met him at the backside of the desert and he saw the burning bush but was not consumed. He said, I will turn around to see this great sight. And then he went around and, and 
going, approaching the burning bush, he heard a voice. Praise God. He has never heard that voice before. He heard a voice that says, hey, stop there. Take off your shoes. And then God began to talk to him. Now, this was beyond everything he has ever heard about God. This was beyond everything. Listen, the reason you are not fully persuaded is because you have never heard his voice. When I see people giving up in life, when I see people giving up of their faith, when I see pastors, even pastors, turning around to start complaining, I know the problem. They have never heard his voice. They have never met him. They have never seen him. Brothers and sisters, when you meet this Jesus, when you meet him, I'm not just talking about meeting him like he, I was sick in my room and then he, come, he came and he laid his hands on me and I was healed. You didn't really meet him, praise God. He just came to minister to you. I'm talking about when you meet him, that he will sit you down and he will begin to tell you about himself. No wonder that day he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? And they were all looking at him and Peter said, I have got something. He said, what do you have got? What, what have you got? He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, what he just said was not revealed to you by flesh and blood. You know what just happened, Peter? You have had a meeting. You have had a visitation from my father in heaven. Because you see, that knowledge, that conclusion, it's not something anybody will be bold enough to say. Do you know what it is to call if someone standing there with you, no matter the miracles you've seen him do, because there have been prophets of old who did mega miracles, see? Now, no matter the miracles you've seen him do, to look at him and say, you are the Christ. He didn't say, I think. No, he says, you are the Christ. Whoa, what a finality. And that's the problem with a lot of people. They haven't seen him yet. They haven't heard of him in truth yet. They read about him, but they haven't heard the Father speak to them about him. Do you know you can have the Father speak to you about the Son? <laughs> hey, That is what some of us do with our lives. When we don't have time for any other thing else, this is what we do with our life. We sit down with the Father. We hold this book. But let me tell you something. We don't open it until the Father begins to tell us where to open and what to look at. And when we open, we begin to see things, you know, things we have never heard before. <laughs> and they begin to confirm what he has already told us. And we begin to say, and then you begin, how come no one is preaching this? How come no one is preaching this? Brothers and sisters, there are people who have gone to school to understand this book, yet they don't understand nothing. Because you can't understand this book in school. No school, no Bible school can bring the revelation of Jesus accurately. No, 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 no Bible school can do that. All the best any Bible school, any man can do for you is to tell you his own experience when he met him. But let me tell you something. Even that experience is just a testimony. Praise God. Let me tell you this until you meet him personally and let him begin to talk to you about himself. That is the real meeting that produces eternal life. Because you see, now you will understand what he means when he said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I'll tell you something, you may be sick in your bed and lying down and you are praying, Jesus, I need your healing, I need your healing. Do you know what? Jesus can come into that same room and sit down with you. And he doesn't need to touch you. He doesn't need to talk about healing. All he needs to do is start talking to you about himself. And then he begins to tell you how, how he, he took away your infirmities. And while he's speaking to you, suddenly an understanding comes into your heart. And then he says, hey, what am I doing being sick here? What am I doing being sick? And then you get up. You don't need anyone to pray for you. You get up from that sick bed and begin to walk and begin to do things you couldn't do before. Why? 
because of the strength of the revelation that you have received of him, you cannot remain the same. You cannot remain lying down. It is impossible. I'll tell you something. The knowledge of him is what produces life. That's what he meant when he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they, he didn't say the words that you read in the Bible. He said the words that I speak unto you. Brothers and sisters, have you heard him speak to you? If you haven't heard him speak to you, then you haven't even received life. No man can give you life. That's the message I'm bringing to you. No man, no preacher, no matter how anointed he is, can give you life. You can only be given life by Jesus himself when you meet him. If you haven't met him, that should become your desire. I'm not saying lock yourself and say, Jesus appear to me, appear to me. No, no. You, Lord, I want to meet you. When that becomes the desire, relax. He will come to you. Because our time is up today. <laughs> Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you at 12 noon today. God bless you. Bye-bye.